everybody. Happy Tuesday. It is time for another edition of the 10 TV Weather Impact Show. Meredith and Aaron, we've got you covered. With yeah. Everything you need to know, weather, science, space, we do it all All on the, the show. fun stuff, yeah. All the interesting <laughs> and informative stuff as well. And, yeah, we're talking about uh, some, finally, some nicer weather after His the rain. His shirt's hinting at it. Yeah, for the uh, <laughs> tropical vibes. Maybe not so tropical today. The humidity is mm. not going to be too bad this afternoon. Uh, but goodness. tomorrow... Oof. Maybe a little hairspray. Bit. I'm yeah. gonna have to bring it out. Yeah. I mean, some guys use hairspray too because <laughs> oh, they're do. here. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, so. I don't want to blow it around too much, you know. It gets yeah. a little poofy. At least my hair does, so. No, yeah. I can imagine. Don't need that. <laughs> no, no point. And we want to make sure you're prepared. But as you can see, we have a big warm up on the way. So earlier this morning, we were in the 50s. Yesterday yeah. morning, we were in the 30s and 40s. Now we've got 80s on the boards. Yeah, finally, and almost 90 degrees. I mean, Whew, especially after talking about just so cold weather, like the rain and the 50s and the 60s. And actually, uh, we were talking about it yesterday. Jerry and I were talking about yesterday afternoon how May actually ended up two degrees. The overall month was two degrees below normal. <laughs> Ooh, All those it. days with rain, we had 18 days with some sort of measurable rainfall. 18 out of the 31. And we, we know it. We, we remember all that rain. So, But if you think about like last year when we were in the drought at the end of the year, maybe it's helping us so we don't get into yeah. that situation going into the summer. So we're trying to find the positives with everything. Yeah, and thankfully we do have some rain in the forecast here this week. So we're not going to be totally dry, but we also will see some nice weather. We will. Well, let's get right to your forecast and let you know what you can expect as we head into the afternoon. Again, you can see Wednesday afternoon, 88. We are eventually going to get there, but one thing I can tell you is that we are going to really see things get going as we move forward into the next couple of days with a UAV index. Eight today, tomorrow is nine. I'm giving you the heads up because if you're somebody who works outdoors for long periods of time, you're going to be outdoors. You need to protect yourself because heat exhaustion, other heat-related illnesses become more and more likely when we have temperatures going up as high as they are. So here's the weather headlines. We have that haze still lingering from the wildfire smoke. But yes, those rain chances are going to be back in the forecast on Thursday. Today, though, if you have time after work, I would get around to golf and I know I'm definitely doing that today because you can see that's my best forecast day for golf. The only reason I have fair for Wednesday is because it's going to get so hot in the afternoon and muggy. And so you'll need to definitely take those breaks, which could make your game a little bit longer. But if you go in the morning, it's still going to be warm, but not as bad in the afternoon and Thursday with the chance of thunderstorms. That's why I dropped it down to fair. But for the impact forecast, we are going to see this heat continue not just today, but also into Wednesday. The warm and sunny weather, again, it just takes preparedness. And we want to make sure that you know all of those different tips. We've got sunscreen, staying hydrated, you know, making sure you take those breaks. You have a hat, just ways to protect yourself from that heat so you don't, again, get any of those heat-related illnesses. But you can see from the morning temperatures in the 70s how quickly we get into the 80s and we stay there into the early evening. So if you're going to be out and about for the rest of the afternoon and evening, definitely won't need a jacket, that's for sure. So I'm not going to show you the hour by hour for Tuesday because it's quite boring because we'll maybe see a couple of clouds show up there. So I do want to skip ahead instead to Wednesday night because as we move forward, we're going to see more clouds start to stream in. And you can see to our north, far northwest Western counties think Bell Fountain to Kenton. Mary and I'd still keep an eye on this. We could see some isolated showers and maybe some rumbles of thunder Wednesday night overnight into Thursday. But for the most part, we stay on the drier side going into Thursday morning. And I say that because we are looking now like we'll start to see some showers and storms pop up in some of our northern and our western counties as we go into nine. So this could be heavy downpours. We could see some isolated thunderstorms. Again, the atmosphere is just going to be really juicy, really ready for these storms to come into and really fire up and get going. And then it becomes more isolated as we go into the lunch hour. You can see very much pop up hit or miss storms. So not everybody is going to have a storm, but there's a potential. There's a chance. And so just make sure you're keeping an eye in the sky, especially if you want to try to get that golf game in earlier, depending on where you're playing. Just know when thunder roars, you want to head indoors, let the storms pass. Give yourself about 30 minutes after, because if you hear thunder, that means lightning is close enough to strike. So for the afternoon, you can still see some of these showers here popping up, continuing for us into the early evening. So we'll be watching that really closely for you. And of course, the 10 Weather Impact team will have updates for you over the coming days. We'll make sure you stay safe and stay informed, especially with this taste of summer. Now, June is meteorological summer. The official summer solstice is still a week or two out. 
But for today, 85, that's our peak afternoon high. If you're going to be on the water today, just know that with that sun, you want to make sure you have plenty of sunscreen and water with you in the boat. And then as we go into tonight, down to 66, so very mild for us overnight. And again, dry tonight, dry most of your Wednesday. It's going to be starting Wednesday evening into Thursday. And then also Friday, we have a chance of some thunderstorms as well. As we go into the weekend, though, those temperatures go down, but actually upper 70s, that's where we're supposed to be for this time of year. And I know it's kind of weird because we've been talking about how it's been below average. So even though 70s will be cooler than where we're going to be the next couple of days, it's actually quite seasonable for us. Yeah, and I mean, after those days where we had, you know, 50s and even some 60s back in right. May, it's going to be nice to just have some nice, uh, comfortable weather. I mean, upper 70s isn't bad. Um, you know, we're not, we don't have to have too many days at uh, right. 80s and humidity quite yet. We have the we know summer, it's coming. right? I was going to yeah, say, we it's got summertime, way. so let's just enjoy some, <laughs> you know, pleasant conditions, at least for a few days. And one of the other things that we've been watching is that we've been talking about the UV index. Yeah. And in case you're not familiar with that, we just want to make sure to go over that with you again. Because one of the things is you can put sunscreen on once, but if it's high enough, you need to keep reapplying, especially yeah. if you sweat or if you go in the pool. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is just to reapply every so often if you're gonna be outside for a while because now that we are into the month of June and we're talking about the higher sun angle and that's really what it comes down to is the overall sun angle that allows for just more of that UV radiation to come in. And we're talking about here, now that we're into the month of June, the angle of the sun is up to 73 degrees and that means it's pretty high in the sky and we're getting the highest amount of UV radiation coming in, especially on some of those sunnier days like we have today and even here on Wednesday. So the biggest thing is applying that sunscreen if you're going to be uh, going outside and reapplying because we're talking about UV index uh, here tomorrow on your Wednesday around 9 and maybe even getting up closer to 10. The scale goes to 11, so we're getting closer to the higher end of the scale. So a higher UV index, you just want to apply that sunscreen at least SPF 30 or higher because that's going to give you the best protection. 30 or higher really gives you at least 95% protection from the sun. The higher the, U, the higher the SPF factor, it does get you closer to about 99% when we're talking about SPF factor of around 70 or even up to 100. But really, as long as you have an SPF 30 or higher, it is going to give you some good protection as we are talking about a lot of sunshine here tomorrow. 88 degrees for a high on your Wednesday. So toasty sunny, a little bit of haze still around, but it's still going to be a decent day. Hot <laughs> temperatures. Though, so <laughs> that's hot. That's yeah. Hot. <laughs> so if you're heading out on the water, it's going to be a toasty one. So sunscreen going to need this. this is, is that F SPF 30? This is a 70, 70. So a little bit higher. Overachieving. So. No, it's good. Yeah. Better Honestly. protection and just again, reapply it every, I would say almost like every hour at least. And I feel every like two with, hours. Sunshine, with sunshine, with sunscreen, you're not only protecting yourself, but you can still get a glow from it. You just yeah. get a little bit of sun that your skin mm -hmm. just glistens. So just protect yourself and you can still have that nice summer look even though you've got sunscreen on. Yeah, and there's plenty of different sunscreens out there. Again, SPF 30, that's what you were looking for, at least SPF 30 to give you at least some good protection. And there's some good ones out there. Like yeah. I, I can say, okay, I'm going to sound kind of nerdy or dorky or whatever, but I have one that's got glitter on it. Oh, okay. So that's I like when different. I put it on because um, it just gives me that glow so that I don't have to worry. Bit. Yeah, that yeah. I don't have to worry as much about, you know, not having enough on so I could get a little bit of color. Um, sure. So there's a lot of different products out there. And there's some that actually can give you. Um, a tan, it's a gradual tanning, mm -hmm. so you're protecting your skin, but you're still giving yourself gradual tanning without exposing it to the harmful rays. Yeah, which is, I mean, I know a lot of people want to get that tan and stuff during the summertime, but right. you still want to be protected too. You do. Well, switching gears, we have some top weather headlines as well. We want you to check this out from yesterday. CCTV footage and time lapse that was released by the National Institute of Geophysics and Vol Volcanology showed Sicily's Mount Etna erupting. This was on Monday, wow. June 2nd. It sent columns of volcanic steam and ash into the sky. Now, according to the Institute, the cloud was probably caused by a collapse of material from the northern flank of the southeast crater. The civil protection in Sicily recommended to hikers avoid the volcano summit until further notice, let it do its thing. The eruption has not affected the operations in the nearby airport, and the city mayor told local media that the situation's under control, and it's actually a reoccurring phenomenon. Now, being Sicilian, I can say, for I'm sure the locals, they're like, oh, here goes our volcano yeah. again. This isn't something new. <laughs> but for people visiting, sure. I think I saw in the video someone taking pictures super close, like, 
I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, definitely not. I saw some video on uh, social media yesterday of uh, people, you know, it started erupting. Everyone was, uh, you know, coming down the mountain, the hikers and everything. I can just imagine being a tourist and just like, right, what's going on? And all of a sudden, you know, here's the volcano erupting. Yeah, and don't get caught in lava. Running down, yeah. Or even so, close to it. No yeah, thanks. pretty crazy <laughs> stuff uh, there. So thankfully, uh, you know, things are uh, calming down a little bit, but of course, that one does erupt uh, quite often, so right. locals are used to it. Uh, what we're also not so used to, but uh, kind of getting a little bit more with that, is the wildfire smoke that's been here the last few days. Fires have burned in the Canadian province of Manitoba on Sunday, and they've been burning for the last uh, few weeks. People have evacuated the area. Now, the Canadian in Integrity Interagency, there you go, Interagency Ooh. Forest Fire Center says as of June 1st, a total of 1.4 million hecta acres have burned so far in Canada. Last week, Manitoba urged 17,000 people to evacuate due to the fires. The province is remote north. Alberta has, Alberta has 49 active fires. There are 24 active fires in Manitoba, 16 in Saskatchewan. And according to provincial data, the outbreak, outbreak of fires across much of Western Canada is due to unusually hot and dry conditions, and the flames are consuming hundreds of thousands of hectare acres on just uh, the dry forest and the, the you know the, just the brush out there. So it's just kind of wild how many fires have there right. have been across Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, up to the Northwest Territories. We've seen them on satellite. We've seen all that smoke pouring down, and it's just uh, you know creating creating a bad situation. Oh. Absolutely. Well, we're we're thankful that those firefighters are working around the clock, yeah. but you know that wildfire smoke impacting a lot of people across the United States as yeah. well. Yeah, and I mean, just uh, looking at the satellite picture uh, this morning and this afternoon, seeing just how much wildfire smoke there is now coming, even here into Ohio, we still have that hazy sky, and it's likely going to stick around. And as long as those fires continue to burn, we're likely going to see more days with right. haze and potential air quality impacts as well. All right. Well, we've got one more special for you. Yeah, this uh, weather this time of year can, of course, be unpredictable. As we all know, we can get rain, we can get storms, anything like that. Uh, so change in plans happen on the fly, and that's the same for organizers of this year's Memorial Tournament. And Meredith, you learned that just it takes a, a lot to go into the planning and everything and weather-wise to keep everyone prepared during a major event. Absolutely. And weather this time of year, as we know, it can get really, really crazy at times. And actually, during major events like this, we got lucky on Friday yeah. with no delays. But the question is, what if a storm had popped up or the course became too unsafe for the players to finish the round? A lot of questions about that, but I actually had a chance to get a sneak peek at how the event organizers are prepared to keep the players and you safe from sunshine to storm. Dan Sullivan is no stranger to the Memorial Tournament. I have been the director for 25 years and actually worked on the tournament since 1991. So you can say I've seen it all when it comes to weather. Heavy rain, thunderstorms, all types of hazards that can impact the tournament outcome. So we've had snow the day before uh, play started. We've had flash floods where we've had to evacuate tents. Weather events that at times can also pose a danger, which requires a special type of preparedness plan to keep everyone safe from the attendees. The way to get on this golf course and off is relatively simple. Uh, folks are able to park their cars next to the golf course and uh, ground surface lots. To those working or participating each day. We have a system in place for all of our players and, and uh, volunteers to get off the golf course. If you have a golf tournament going on, probably 30, 40,000 spectators on there. You have to make decisions early to make sure everybody can get to safety. Which requires continuous updates before the tournament starts. Based on the forecast, they will do different maintenance practices. Um, to, to, to get to where their goal um, for Thursday morning when the golf when the tournament starts to have that golf course in the perfect condition up until the final swing. It was so interesting just talking to them and um, to learn how many actual times during the tournament they yeah. had to delay it or actually cancel around because of inclement weather. Yeah, and I know they have this, uh, they had this book and everything that actually had a page talking about some of the different years that it. actually had, you know, different delays, you I know, when it talks like about heavy times. rain. I thought it was page 36, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, yeah. 
this is scoring. But I do remember this... uh, 2012, there was a delay due to heavy rainfall during the morning. And then even uh, more recent years, we had uh, incidents where there was some severe oh, well. weather. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll find <laughs> we it later. We bookmarked it, but we didn't think about that until after Yeah, that. but I, I remember a couple of the years, there were some delays due to severe weather, some lightning around, right. and of course, even heavy rainfall, which was our concern on Friday, because we did have some pockets of heavy rainfall, but thankfully it didn't lead to any uh, delays. And you know, it was interesting, we talked about snow in there, and you're thinking, okay, end of May, snow. Apparently, back when they first started it, they had the tournament earlier in the year, and it was ah. at this time where they would have snow that sure. could delay it and stuff like that. So then they ended up pushing it back and having it later in May, and so that's kind of why. But then, unfortunately, we have all the other crazy weather that we get here in central Ohio <laughs> to deal with. Yeah, so sometimes you just can never win when it comes to the weather. <laughs> but hey, I mean, I think a little bit of light rain over uh, snow is a little bit more ideal. Yeah. Maybe it depends on the temperature. And it was good luck for Scotty <laughs> Scheffler this yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, hey, they got through the tournament. It was a good one. And we only had just one day where the weather wasn't too uh, too nice. Absolutely. Well, that's it for your weather update here on Ted TV+. Plus. Coming up later tonight at 6, we have Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martin. Until then, you can catch more news, weather, and traffic online at 10TV.com. So have a great afternoon.